Hello and welcome to day four of our Advent calendar. First of all, apologies to those of you who woke up yesterday to discover that the video was me fumbling around trying to uh, record my introduction to the video. Uh, I hope, hope you actually managed to catch up on the uh, actual video later in the day. If not, it's still there on both Facebook uh, and YouTube. So do uh, do have a go and uh, catch up on it. Today uh, we're back into the world of literature and Kenneth Graham's The Wind in the Willows. Uh, this is a little story from, uh, from that uh, book where we hear about Mole finding his way back to his house. He's out just before Christmas for a walk with Ratty uh, and he suddenly catches a scent of, of his house and realises they're close by and he has been back to his house since the beginning of the story, um, since all his adventures with Mole and Ratty and Toad uh, began. And suddenly he wants to go back to his house so after a little bit of persuading uh, Ratty takes him back to the house uh, and they're just about to tuck into a little bit of food that they've found there. And that's where we pick up the story. At last, the rat succeeded in decoying him to the table and had just got seriously to work with the sardine opener when sounds were heard from the forecourt outside. Sounds like the scuffling of small feet in the gravel and a confused murmur of tiny voices whilst broken sentences reached them. Now, all in a line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throats first. No coughing after I say one, two, three. Where's young Bill? Here, come on. We're all waiting. What's up? inquired the rat, pausing in his labours. I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole with a touch of pride in his manner. They go round carol singing regularly at this time of year. They're quite an institution in these parts, and they never pass me over. They come to Mole End last of all, and I used to give them hot drinks and supper too sometimes, when I could afford it. It will be like old times to hear them again. Let's have a look at them, cried the rat jumping up and running to the door. It was a pretty sight and a seasonable one that met their eyes. When they flung the door open, in the forecourt lit by the dim rays of a horn lantern, some eight or ten little field mice stood in a semicircle, red worsted comforters round their throats, their forepaws thrust deep into their pockets, their feet jiggling for warmth. With bright, beady eyes, they glanced shyly at each other, sniggering a little, sniffing and applying coat sleeves a good deal. As the door opened, one of the elder ones that carried the lantern was just saying, Now then, one, two, three. And forthwith, their shrill little voices uprose on the air singing one of the old-time carols that their forefathers composed in fields that were fallow and held by frost, or went snowbound in chimney corners, and handed down to be sung in the miry street to the lamplit windows at Yule time. Villagers all, this frosty tide, let your doors swing open wide, Though wind may follow and snow beside, yet draw us in by your fire to bide. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Here we stand in the cold and sleet, blowing fingers and stamping feet. Come from far away you to greet, you by the fire and we in the street, bidding you joy in the morning. For ere one half of the night was gone, sudden a star has led us on, raining bliss and benison, bliss tomorrow and more anon, joy for every morning. Good man Joseph, 
toiled through the snow, saw the star or a stable low. Mary, she might not further go, welcome thatch and litter below. Joy was hers in the morning. And then they heard the angels tell, who were the first to cry Noel. Animals all, as it befell, in the stable where they did dwell. Joy shall be theirs in the morning. The voices ceased. The singers, bashful but smiling, exchanged sidelong glances, and silence succeeded, but for a moment only. Then, from up above and far away, down the tunnel they had so lately travelled was borne to their ears in a faint musical hum, the sound of distant bells ringing a joyful and clangorous peal. Well sung, boys, cried the rat heartily. And now come along, come in all of you, and warm yourselves by the fire and have something hot.